Hello everybody and welcome back to Regrowth. Picking up where we left off last time, got our crucible furnace going here. And I've got some iron, go ahead and throw that in and let's get it cooking up. Mmm, it's not cooking up. Well, it turns out that this crucible furnace only gets up to 1500 degrees Celsius. And as you can see here, the iron needs 1538 degrees Celsius. So I need to increase this by 38 degrees Celsius, and I'm pretty sure you do that by sitting on it. If you sit on it, it will go up to 30, it will increase it by 38 degrees Celsius. Yeah, no, that's not going to happen. So it turns out that this only goes up to 1500 degrees. We need more than that to melt down the iron. So it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to use the crucible furnace to process my iron ore. Well, let's go to our quest book and see what it has to say about the matter. And if we go here, we will see that having built the crucible furnace, I have unlocked this quest, Searing Heat. While the crucible furnace is great at holding heat and melting down metals, you feel you could do better. Cobblestone seems to actually melt when placed in the crucible furnace. When it is then cast as an ingot, it seems to form a brick that is incredibly resistant to heat. This could be the material you need to make a more efficient smeltery operation than the crucible furnace. So much as I suspected from last time, when I put cobblestone into the crucible furnace, it turns into seared bricks right there. And I've already made quite a few of them, as you can see. So I've got the seared bricks, and now that means I can work on making a smeltery. And now I have a smeltery. All right. So I'm cooking up a bunch of iron. I've already made some, as you can see. I now have a tool forge so I can make the better tools. Well, I can't really make the better tools just yet. Uh, I was a little bit fortunate in that completing this quest gave me an ingot cast and a pickaxe head cast. So I've gone ahead and I've been able to make myself an iron pickaxe, but I don't yet have the ability to make any other types of casts because I don't have gold nor aluminum to make aluminum brass to make the casts with. But at least I have the smeltery, which means I can do stuff with iron. So as you can see, I'm cooking up some iron. So I really like to be able to have some iron armor instead of this stuff that I've been sort of scrounging from mobs that I've been killing. Mana steel. Concentrated form of mana you're producing seems to have some interesting properties. The Lexco Botania seems to suggest that coating iron in it will yield an even more useful material. Yeah, mana steel. Rune of Mana. Rune of Water. Rune of Air. Rune of Earth. Okay, so in order to finish this particular quest, I need to be able to make the Rune of Fire. Unfortunately, the Rune of Fire requires nether bricks, and nether wart. Now, as far as I can tell, of course you can get nether brick from nether rack, and doesn't seem to be any simple ways for me to make nether rack. So it appears that I'm gonna have to go into the nether for that. In addition, nether wart also would require trips to the nether because at worst or at best I could use a blaze rod but I would need to make an alchemy catalyst which requires more blaze rods so I'm obviously going to need to find nether rack and nether wart in the nether so I've built myself a nether portal I have geared myself up with all iron armor I still only have a flint and rapier because I don't have a way to make better weapons just yet. 
So, I guess, without further ado, let me jump into the nether and see what it holds for me. Well, before I do that, let me get this ready because there is a quest that allows me, or that will light up when I go into the nether. Oh, look at that. If I go to the nether, I'll get nether rack, nether ward, and soul stand. So, that will make things easy. I won't have to do too much exploring. But, let's go see what's to be expected in the nether. Oh. Okay. 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 I hate when the nether portal is spawned on the edge like that. But we've got uh, sulfur ores. We've got some quartz ores, which I think I'd like to... Oh, they get angry even with quartz ore? Oh, that is unfair. Oh, I'm gonna die. I didn't think they got angry with just quartz ore. Oh, this was a mistake. Oh, crud. Okay, well, if you didn't know, the nether ores mod, which adds things like nether coal ore and there might be other types of ores. If you mine those, it angers the zombie pigmen, and then they will attack you. So, generally speaking, don't mine them. And if, I mean, in addition to all the other bad guys that are in the nether, you certainly don't need to have the zombie pigmen after you as well, because that's just going to make things even more difficult. Okay, so now the quest is fulfilled, so I can get nether rack and nether wart. And there's a huge amount of soul sand here, and of course there's nether rack almost everywhere, so it doesn't really matter. But I'll go ahead and take the nether rack to claim that reward. Okay, well now you know where all the ores disappeared to. Looks like the zombie pigmen got a little envious and transported the ore to the nether. Not quite sure how they did it, though. At the very least, you now have the ability to mine some of the materials you need, though it might pay to be wary that the pigmen don't notice you stealing what they stole. Yeah. So, looks like I gotta get some copper ores and do some stuff with the blacksmith. Okay, well, I am going to... There are a lot of bad things in the nether. A lot of monsters that are added by the various mods. As you can see, these little heat scar spiders, they're not fun to deal with. In addition to having to worry about zombie pigmen being angry at me anytime I want to mine something. So are these guys still mad at me? No, I don't think so. So, oh boy, I need to, well, the quest is to find copper, but I th think what I'm going to do right now is just go ahead and head back, since I have some nether wart and nether rack, and finish up what I can do with the Botania quests, and that will also help me do some other quests as well that might progress. I just feel like I would want to get to a spot, oh look, there's some... Chicken and feather meat. Chicken meat and feathers. Feather meat, I said. That makes a lot of sense. I think I can use these flame strings to make bows, which could be useful. Um, but it's just so hard to do any mining in the nether with all these pigmen around. Ah, see, there's nether iron. So I could have a source of iron that way. And the quartz. But I need to find... I almost need like a more stable, not more stable, but a safer place to do mining because nether gold, uh, because these zombie pigmen are just going to swarm me every time I want to mine anything up. Anyway, I'm just going to head back and finish up some of the Botania quests. And finally, the Rune of Fire. Okay, so that's all of the basic runes or what I would call the basic runes probably so let's go back into here and we will take 
Mm, take living rock for our reward. And so the next thing to do is make the seasonal runes. The more complex runes are compounds of lesser runes. The first set of compound runes represent the season and the elements which dominate each one. All right, time to make those. Okay, so I'm over here working on my next batch of essence seeds that uh, that I've been that I'm growing, and I've gotten through the botania process. So I've got nether seeds, earth seeds, uh, fire, water, and air, obsidian, and aluminium or aluminum if you're in the U.S. And I'm eager to get this aluminum because this with copper will allow me to make aluminum brass. And that means I can start making more of the molds for uh, working in my smeltery. Now, this area is a little bit cramped because I didn't really plan it. And I didn't know I was going to be doing this. But this here is a sprinkler. And this is also from the AgriCraft mod. Same mod that adds the crop sticks and the mutations and whatnot. But the sprinkler, obviously, as you can see, sprinkles water around. And that increases the growth rate of any crops that it waters. Okay, the water is delivered through these irrigation channels and they come from this water tank right here. Now, these irrigation channels do not go up and down, they will only stay on a level plane like that. So, you can't. Um, how you know say so you can't like carry them like downhill or something like that with these irrigation channels so as you can see i have water coming up into this water tank and that water is coming from that thing over there that is and it is raining but this is water tank from railcraft and as you can see currently it's filling up with water now, the way the water tank works is that it, just by existing, it sort of collects water out of nothing, out of the air, if you will. So if you're familiar with an aqueous accumulator from thermal expansion, I think it is, it works like that. It doesn't need water around it, and it will generate water on its own. I put it over here. Now, it, it, it does say that it will generate water faster in more humid biomes and slower in more dry or arid biomes. Well, if you remember in a previous episode, I said this area here is where it rains, whereas over here it does not rain, see? So I thought this might be considered a more humid biome for one. The other thing I wasn't sure about is I don't know if rain itself will make this fill up faster or slower. Well, not slower. I would hope it raining wouldn't make it fill up slower. But I didn't know if rain would make it fill up faster, so I figured that's another good reason to put it here. But it also meant that I had to run some transport pipe from here all the way over to there. And you'll see that I've got the wooden pipe, the cobblestone pipes, and you don't need an engine of any kind. The wooden pipe is enough to draw out of the railcraft water tank okay so that's where I'm getting my water and then that water is transported through the tubes as I said or through the pipes as I said to the water tank which then feeds these um, sprinklers which waters these crops and is getting them to grow a little bit faster and mutate a little bit faster and all that kind of stuff one thing that's kind of interesting which I've noticed I'm gonna break this and grab this seed now if you let me go like this See, will this work? Okay, if you look on the right, on the left hand side here, you can see the particle droplet effects from the water. When I scan this seed, you might, hopefully, you should be able to see how it slowed down. And once it's done scanning, it kind of speeds back up. I take a big performance hit whenever I'm scanning a seed in the seed analyzer. So, not sure if that's just the way it is, if it's a bug, I have no idea. I also think it's funny that if I go to a certain point, the sprinkler disappears because it stops being rendered. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So anyway, that's what I'm working on right now. 
Okay, so now we are going to combine mandrake seeds, wheat, wheat seeds, pasture seeds, rune of earth, and a rune of mana. Set that going. Grab myself a living rock. And now I have eggs. Yes, that means chickens. Yeah. So here's the quest for, for eggs. Feathers can be a very useful resource, and eggs might be just the basis you need to bring back other forms of life. Next stop, chickens. All right, so this will give me some chickens, obviously, to use as a reward. And it gives me these experience drops. Okay, so now I have 32 eggs. I should get at least one chicken out of all that, I will hope. And, of course, that will allow me to get more eggs. But if we look in here, we can see that this quest to get the eggs, which I've done, has opened up all of these other quests. So obviously, finding a way to get cows and sheep and bats, and this is going to be the wolves. Hopefully not the dire wolves, because that would be bad. Ooh, even villagers. Ocelots and pigs. So I will be able to start my own ranch. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment and tell me what you think. And I'll see you in the next episode.